Okay, this video is going to be on if you're going to try to 3D print a small uh, wire cage, lamp protector cage, whatever you'd like to call it, on an FDM printer, <clears throat> which you have to look out for and stuff like that. I've already done the video on making it out of metal. This one's resin printed, done the video on, on that one. This one just came off that machine about an hour ago. This one I printed a few days ago, and it kind of explains uh, some of the problems you can run into. One, when you're printing up, these posts are left unsupported. And so by the time you get about 30 or 35 millimeters up, they start wiggling as the uh, print head comes around. And then you end up getting funky uh, areas that break and don't work. That's if you use the auto-generated supports. Well, even manually, if you try to add supports to these sidewalls, um, the slicers won't do it because these are vertical, shouldn't require it, but they're so small that they do require it. So the way I got around that, and hang on, I'm going to be moving you guys. Here we are in the bamboo lab slicer. I added an octagon piece that's only um, 0.2, it's a single layer because I'm printing at 0.2 layer height single layer octagon that just barely touches all eight of those so as this thing prints up right about where it would start wobbling I now have a platform that holds them all together so they won't wobble now you go ahead and turn on the supports and I chose the, the tree supports because they're easier to remove and it uh, will make the tree supports come up and support that plate that we just put in there and they also go up and support the uh, upper part of the build so uh, you can rotate it around so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Well, you'll see on the part that's printing. It's just uh, finishing up as we speak. While it's finishing up, I've noticed some uh, comments on people that want to print this thing down in scale. And there's really only two parts you're going to have a problem with in printing this on a smaller scale. <clears throat> One's going to be this, because these are going to get really small if you halved them or thirded them. You might have to make a new cage yourself that starts off much beefier, much thicker, in which case you might not need any supports if it was beefier and thicker. And the other place you might have a problem might be on the lamp domes. These were printed on this machine at 0.2 layer height, and of course they look very good, but I did them with a one millimeter thick wall. So if you were to reduce this down in half, now you're at 0.5 millimeter, and if you went to a third, you're beginning to less than four, and you're, uh, if you've got a 0.4 nozzle on there, it's not going to work. The slicer is going to reject the file. So you might have to make uh, new domes if you're going to make a miniature one that, that are thicker. And I kind of covered this in another video. When I print this on here, I use the tree supports again. That goes up in there like that. This whole thing printed flat like that. So when you pull it off the build plate, you just grab that and snap the tree out. And then your part is done. So, this is just wrapping up over here, and when it does, I'll pop it off and you can have a look at what it looks like before I remove the supports. Um, this is the one that I just printed, like I say, an hour ago, and I could use a little bit of sanding up in there where I broke the supports off, but other than that, it turned out quite well. Less than a minute should be a... Uh, should be finishing up here. Yep. I know that sound. It's finishing up. Timer says it should be done. I got zero zero. We're under five minutes in this video, so this is going to be real quick.
So, there you can see it. And uh, I come in and uh, when I do it this way, and I just cut all these across the top so they're separate from the bottom, because then you can break this whole bottom piece loose. Uh, to fit it out through this bottom hole, though, I kind of go in there with the snippers and needle nose and break it in two. Then I can pull one half out, pull the other half out. Then just come up to the top and uh, start yanking all those pieces out. But uh, if you're going to do it on an FDM printer, you're going to have to have supports. You're going to have to support these, these little uh, rod pieces. Otherwise, it's going to fail. But it can be done. Here's the proof. And if you're going to do it on a resin printer, it's fairly easy. You can see the little dipple points in there. Those are where the supports were when it came off. Snap those out so you can do it on a resin printer. And the nice thing about a resin printer is you could uh, either select if you had the more expensive really strong resin or the really expensive flexible resin. Either one might be better for a cage because then you wouldn't run them breaking. If it was flexible, if someone grabbed it, it would just collapse and when they let go it would spring back. And if it's the really strong stuff, they'd have to go out of the way. Now being a cosmetic part, I don't particularly really worry about it breaking one way or the other because it's just uh, it's not mechanically functional as cosmetic. Now, of course the very first way I show making them is uh, at a wire and you're going to solder them and it's a lot more work but it certainly is strong and it's not going anywhere. 